This is a story of two guns. Well, technically they're pretty much the same gun because this is a Glock 43X and this is a Glock 43X MOS. Now, <laughs> when I first purchased the Glock 43X, I realized quickly, I didn't like the trigger that came from Glock. So I found myself putting an aftermarket Apex trigger into this pistol. And eventually, I found myself wanting the Glock 43X MOS and expected to have to do the same thing. However, to my surprise, my pleasant surprise, after taking this pistol to the range, putting many magazines through it, I quickly realized that the factory trigger on this Glock 43X MOS was far superior than the factory trigger that came with this Glock 43X. To the point where this is still a stock trigger. Now, both of these pistols have thousands of rounds through each one of them. And we're gonna take a look at how a factory Glock trigger, after being broken in, compares or fares against an Apex trigger that's been broken in as well. So let's jump right into this. Hey everybody, it's Nicholas Rogers with the Big Timber! Large! <laughs> Coming back at you today with another awesome video where we're taking a look at how the Glock 43X factory trigger stands up to an Apex trigger after thousands of rounds. I've heard, it's not confirmed, that Glock does do improvements on their generations of firearms without letting the public know. What? Which, I don't know how you look at it, but I think it could be a good thing. If they know that the triggers that came out with the first versions of the Gen 5 kind of sucked. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. And they improve it? And then the newer versions come out and they have a much better trigger? That's a win for the consumer. But maybe they should just let us know that they're doing that. Now, this could all be daydreaming that this is actually happening, and maybe there's an actual issue with the quality control check. Fight! Finish him! And some of the pistols came out with a worse trigger than others. But anyways, I digress. I wanted to have a look at what is now the trigger weight with my scale for both of these pulls. I wanna see what this pistol's trigger breaks at having an apex trigger, and I wanna see what this pistol breaks at having a factory trigger. Now, I also wanna do some slow motion video showing you what the creep, take up, and actual break looks like so you can have a better understanding of what you can expect with a broken in trigger or an aftermarket trigger after thousands of rounds. So. Let's go ahead and do the trigger pull weight first. I'm gonna be using a Lyman Digital Trigger Pull Gauge, and we're gonna be starting off with my Glock 43X MOS because it has the factory trigger. I'm gonna be pulling five times and then getting an average. Then we'll move on to the Glock 43X with the Apex. As you can see, there's no round in the chamber and there's no magazine. This pistol is safe to pull the trigger. Go ahead and hit ready. Key to this is placing it towards the middle of the trigger shoe and pulling back slowly and evenly. So we have five pounds, 0.5 ounces. Five pounds, 0.9 ounces. Very consistent with this factory trigger after it was broken in. Five pounds, 5.2 ounces. Five pounds, 4.1 ounces. Last pull. Five 
5 pounds, 8.4 ounces, with an average of 5 pounds, 3.8 ounces. Now I have my Glock 43X non-MOS that has the apex trigger. As you can see, there's no magazine. The chamber is empty. It is safe to pull the trigger. All right. First pull. Woo. Four pounds, 6.2 ounces. It's a completely different feel with the apex versus the factory trigger. More of a rolling break, but we'll get into that here shortly. Second pull. Four pounds, 10 ounces. Four pounds, 11.1 ounces. And that was number three. Five pounds, 5.3 ounces. Four pounds, 14.9 ounces, with an average of four pounds, 12.7 ounces. So, wow, <laughs> a seven ounce difference between the Apex trigger and the Glock factory trigger. Does that surprise you? Because it surprises me a little bit because I really don't notice that difference of almost a half pound in the trigger pull weight when I'm at the range with these two pistols. But I think the reason for that is because the apex trigger changes the way that this trigger works. It's hard to describe without actually showing you. Okay, so as you can see, the pistol is in a safe condition to handle indoors. And when I first place my finger onto the trigger shoe, there's resistance. There is no slop, there is no creep, it's take up. And as I pull it backwards towards the wall, it builds and builds and finally, gets to a wall, and then breaks. Notice the happy finger in its natural habitat on the Glock trigger shoe as it pulls back in the take-up portion to only be met with a strict and defined wall. The finger is applying more and more pressure without the trigger shoe moving because of the said wall until it finally breaks. That's what you expect with a normal trigger in a Glock, and it feels fantastic. There's no hump, there's no grinding on the take up. It's just nice and smooth, and then I get to the wall, and then I continue to apply pressure, and it breaks. Now let's have a look at the reset. That's the reset. It's not much. And then the break. Fantastic. One more time. The reset is going to push the trigger shoe right onto the front side of the wall so that as I hit that reset and I go to re-engage with the trigger, I am already back at the wall. I am not getting back into a take-up point with this trigger as if my finger was completely off the trigger shoe and then pulling backwards. I am just being met right at the wall into the brake. This feels fantastic for what I consider to be a more traditional style conceal and carry pistol trigger. So this is the Glock 43X with the Apex trigger. Now, one of the interesting things about the Apex that I was told to be aware of is that it doesn't have a wall. And I really didn't know what the person meant until I tried it for myself. So let's talk about the take up. So as soon as I put my fingertip onto the trigger shoe and start to pull back, like the factory trigger, there's no creep, there's no slop. I am just met with resistance of the trigger shoe pushing back into my fingertip. Now, as I come back and back and back, the pressure builds slightly, but I'm never really finding a wall. 
and once again we find the finger in its natural happy habitat. Inside the trigger guard, pressing rearward on the trigger shoe. Yet something is different. Something's new. As the finger continues to press into the trigger shoe, the trigger shoe presses back, gaining more and more pressure. But the finger is looking for a discernible, something definable, such as a wall. But it's not there. The finger continues to press into the trigger shoe until finally, surprisingly, it finds the break. It's what we call a rolling break. There is no defining moment of this finger is about to pull this trigger and make the gun go boom. It's just a surprise. As you pull back on the trigger shoe, it just continues to build with pressure and then finally it breaks. Now, what does the reset look like? Well, let me go ahead and show you. The reset to me is slightly shorter than the reset that you get with the factory trigger shoe. Now, it's not measurably shorter, but I do notice that it is slightly shorter. And let's see, so I'm right after the reset, and once again, there is no wall. So unlike the Glock 43X factory trigger, as I pull through, go into my reset, come out of the reset, I'm now going back into a rolling break. There is no wall. There's no defining wall. So what are your thoughts on these two triggers? The factory Glock 43X MOS trigger to me is far superior than what the factory Glock 43X trigger was when I first purchased it. To the point where I didn't enjoy this trigger and felt it needed something aftermarket. Now, putting in the Apex trigger I think was fantastic because it exposed exposed me to a trigger style that I was not used to. I was used to something more classic, something more traditional, like the factory trigger from Glock in both of these pistols. The Apex trigger gave me that rolling brake experience, which actually helps me with controlled shots at range because I never really know when the trigger is about to break because there is no definable wall. Now, with good practice, I've been able to develop just as good of shooting skills with the factory Glock trigger as I have with the Apex. And I have to say, if this Glock 43X would have had this Glock 43X MOS's trigger, I never would have tried the Apex. So maybe if you have a Glock 43X and you don't like the trigger, have a look at the Apex or something else that's aftermarket that might make your experience more enjoyable and get you to the range more often. But I have to say, I'm happy with both. And they've aged both incredibly well. I would say that the Apex hasn't really improved. It is just as good as it was the day that I purchased it and had it installed as it is today. Now, with the factory Glock 43X MOS trigger, I'm surprised because it really hasn't changed as well either. Maybe it's gotten a little bit smoother in the take up, but not noticeably more. Out of the box, this MOS trigger was fantastic. And I hope that yours is just as good as this one is. So until next time, peace.